Let it end. Let Juan Soto make his decision and pick where he's going to play next because some free agents are starting to fly off the board sooner than anticipated, and we're still awaiting a Soto decision. This feels like Otani 2.0. Will it be Otani 2.0 for the Blue Jays? Let's break down the new reports and much more on this episode of Jays Digest. Welcome in, everybody, to Jays Digest. I'm your host, Peter Riotis, alongside host Nick Goss. And before we get into all this madness that has been going on the past couple of weeks, I want to let you know that this video is brought to you by Rentals.ca, who is a proud supporter of Team Canada. And while they've been supporting our national team defend their home court in international competition, they've also been helping thousands of Canadians find their home floors all across the country, whether you're in Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Calgary, Halifax, Winnipeg, Mississauga, Edmonton, Victoria, St. John's. It doesn't matter. Rentals has you covered. Yeah, from coast to coast, you have a ton of options to find the perfect place and price for you. The website is clean, super easy to use. You can pinpoint exactly on the map where you want to move, finding all the available options in your area. So find your home court with rentals.ca and check out the link in the pinned comment as well as the description down below. And thank you to rentals.ca for supporting us, supporting Team Canada, and of course, supporting you guys in finding the best rentals across the country. So thank you again to rentals.ca for sponsoring this video. Peter, it is now Sunday night. The ongoing situation is getting crazier, and it still has yet to come to a conclusion. We're hoping tonight was the night, but it seems like tomorrow is going to be the day. We have a bunch of new reports to go over, and I think he's going to sign tomorrow. I really hope at this point he does, but new... So winter meetings are officially undergoing now. So we're hearing actual insight about the Jays, about the Mets, about the Yankees. And John Heyman, about 15 minutes ago, came out and said some interesting things. Right, 30 minutes ago, sorry. So Brandon Wiles, shout out to him. He kind of summarized it here. So lots of good stuff here from Heyman on Soto. We also have an interesting report from a Jays beat reporter. So five teams are still involved. Would not be shocked if the Jays have the highest offer. But it does feel like the New York teams are favorites and Dodgers are quite a bit behind with the money. So this is the first time where John Heyman has come out and kind of confirmed that the Jays have the highest offer. And Peter, we've kind of been, I've been discussing with, you know, just other Jays fans as well. And you, of course, it seems like everything is so quiet regarding the Toronto Blue Jays. And it's because they have the biggest offer. It seems like that is ultimately the case. And then Eric Truden came out a Jays guy and said, do with this what you will. But I've spoken with two former Blue Jays and their agents that have been told by the Jays that their entire focus is on Juan Soto. It remains to be seen if they land the big fish, but the Jays are outright telling some free agents that talks won't happen until the Soto decision. That's all to say that if they miss out, it won't be because they didn't try. Now, I'm assuming this is kind of in the secondary tier of free agents because we know they had a meeting with Corbin Byrne and also, in theory, Max Freed. But Peter, the Jays have the highest offer on the table, which is good and bad. If they don't get them, I mean, they tried their butts off to get this player. Yeah, and just don't ask John Heyman uh, what kind of cut he's going to be getting from this Juan Soto deal because he may react in a, a very particular way. But yes, the Blue Jays, in order for them to get him, they have to give the highest offer. That has been established for whatever reason. They're sort of on the outside looking in. Every other team has advantages, whether it be geographical, whether it be in the Red Sox case, the uh, the team that he grew up idolizing, or in the Dodgers case, a team that is a proven winner and has shown that they don't care how much money they spend. They're just going to go out there and win World Series and play deep into October. So this is an uphill battle for the Blue Jays right now. And I actually read something interesting that the Dodgers may be behind in the money, but if they can get to that $700 million figure, that there's a serious chance or a legitimate possibility that Soto actually signs on with them. So right now my power ranking still has the Mets at the top and maybe the Yankees as a close second, but it does feel like an uphill battle right now for the Toronto Blue Jays. Again, I'm still holding out hope that they can get him but it, it can it can get tricky in the sense that they might just have to keep upping their offer if other teams come back and say, oh, we'll match that, no problem. Oh, we'll do that. There's no issues there. So the Blue Jays are going to be in tough here, and I find it concerning that they haven't done any other work on other free agents. I thought that it would be different this time around. I thought that they would have learned from their previous mistakes and uh, it could either be um, a stroke of genius because they know that they're going to get him and they're just waiting for the meetings to finish. Or it could just be plain stupid and trying to repeat the same old things over and over again that have failed you. Uh, I, they failed last offseason miserably. And I'm not going to say that there were any game breakers out there besides Otani, but you didn't allow yourself the chance to get any of the upper tier free agents. 
you had to settle for Justin Turner, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, and to re sign just uh, Kevin Kiermeyer. That is what you had to go with as a plan B because everyone else was gone and you put all of your eggs in the Otani basket. I have a fear that they're doing the same thing here and may not end too well. That is ultimately the worry. And as you were basically echo what Thomas Hall said, good scoop by Eric here. Many, I'm sure, upset by what happened because of Otani last season. But of course, this is how things work, especially when Scott Boris also represents several other marquee free agents. And to Jason Irvin and some other guys, we'll have another video on that tomorrow. But ultimately, um, you're right. And there's a couple sides to take it. Either they're very confident in their ability to get Juan Soto, so they're not going for other guys, or they're just full sending Juan Soto. And if not, they'll pivot. I think Anthony Santander is going to be a Blue Jay. Again, we'll have a video on that coming up at some point. But the most recent report we got just dropped, again, from John Heyman at the winter meetings. You can see him wearing his fancy suit in the uh, and a pretty cool background as well. But it's um, he is saying the Jays like to have the highest offer. I still think he wants to be a New York Med. And regarding some of the other teams' pursuits and the Jays as well, just to give some context, industry sources describe Boston efforts at this point an A-plus effort. But according to John Heyman, um, the Red Sox are falling behind a little bit. The Jays are super, obviously, in on the uh, thing. And... Two things here. Either the Jays are confident in their chances of signing Juan Soto, and since they're great with the leaks, no one actually knows but them, or the Jays are dumb. And uh, the dumb coming from the fact that they don't if they don't get anybody else. Like, Peter, if they don't get Juan Soto and they strike out, they go all in, they offered him $800 million, he doesn't sign, and then they're stuck with none of the big guys. Maybe they get a Santander, but they don't get Corbin Burns or Max Fried. It would be literally Otani all over again, and I'd like to think they learn from their mistakes and they're going all out for Juan Soto here, but either they are very confident in their ability to get Juan Soto or um, they're doing a bit of a risky move, even though, again, according to multiple reports here, they have the highest offer. Yeah, it's risky regardless of which way you put it because if you stay in the bidding long enough, it might get too high to the point where you're not able to address the other holes on your roster. And if you stay in long enough and you don't get him, we might see, you said Anthony Santander is going to be a Blue Jay. I don't know about that. If he gets a good offer from someone else and the Blue Jays are still uh, waiting on their hands and knees for Juan Soto to sign with them, I'm not so sure that he's going to wait for the Blue Jays to pivot to him. Why would you do that? If you're a top free agent, we thought that the market would be set by Juan Soto and then we would see all the other guys sign, but it hasn't been the case. All the teams that aren't in on Soto have already given out some big contracts. Blake Snell got $182 million. Willie Adamas got something similar. Now, you could, we could have said, oh, we didn't see that coming, but they're getting a lot of money, and, and that's just the way things are going right now. Free agents are going to make a ton of money on the open market because the game is making money, and, and it's getting more popular, and they're generating more revenue, so there's more of the piece of the pie to go around in a sense. So guys are not going to wait for Soto to sign a $750 million deal. If they get a good offer, they're going to jump on it. And for that reason, the Jays not doing any of their due diligence on other guys, which I am shocked by, by the way, I can't believe that they're making this mistake again. Uh, that, that will allow them to, um, to fail again. If they don't get Soto and they're just waiting and waiting and waiting for him to make a decision, they're going to get screwed over again. And that looks like the situation that we're headed into because uh, this is this can't be happening again. Like it, It's two off seasons in a row now. Yeah, and again, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. There was reports saying they met with Corbin Burns, so maybe they're just doing it with a couple of the free agents. But at the end of the day, we'll keep you up to date with all the latest news. So make sure to hit the subscribe button again. Thank you to Rentals.ca for sponsoring this one. Hopefully... Juan Soto uses rentals.ca if he comes to Toronto to find his new house or apartment. Thank you guys, and we will see you when Juan Soto signs, or we'll see you tomorrow for the video like usual. Thank you guys for watching.